You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. Thank you, uh, Danilius Mays. Thank you so oh, much. You. Or somebody else that. Yeah, it's a couple of people in there. You know, my, sorry we missed you guys. Yeah, my, my scroller you. wasn't scrolling. Don't ask me why, but scroller wasn't scrolling. that's why I think we should give wifey a microphone. She refuses, you know, and we can have her chime in and do the secretarial duties around here. So uh, last month, right, this story didn't get a lot of press because I didn't hear about it until this week. Uh-huh. Uh, this kid, his name is Donya Jones, right? He's the daughter of uh, Melissa McKinney. She mm-hmm. was a Ferguson activist. Mm. And he was found hung in his backyard. I saw that. I saw that. Um, uh, uh, our condolences out to his moms and his family. Right. Um, I don't know all of the details. Do you have some more details on the situation? Well, they don't. A lot of people. I, I, I know the police are trying to dismiss it as something that. They, they, they were trying to see if it was suicide or not. Right, right. But again, I, we did a show like last month. And I named like seven people that who got died in cars, who and got killed in cars, and burned in cars for who are Ferguson activists. Absolutely, absolutely. So I think they're murder. I think they're systematically just picking these people off. And he's from where? He's from Missouri. Okay, His so mother so was a Ferguson activist. Okay, so we we understand that there's something going on out there, and I'm surprised that the Black Panther Party or whichever real organization that's got boots on the ground are not investigating this to a level because that's more than an anomaly to me. The names you ran off told me that this was not uh, coincidental. There's no such thing as a coincidence on that level when we have that many people. And then the ways they were found. Like, and the way that they were found. Shattered was, stomach burned in the car. It's like it was Shattered a head, signature. The car. So this is a serial. Like, what? Right. And now you're dealing with lynchings. And the in lynching in 2018 is one of the most... Horrific archetypes for our people, symbolic, yeah. symbolic for yeah. our people, that that really conjures up a whole nother set of emotions. Maybe not for this specific generation, yeah. but for our eldership. And you know, and I still remember it. I'm 50, so I'm kind of you know in the 60s all the way up. So I, I understand the traumatic symbolism of such, and they don't forget. So they know. If we do this, you know, just speculating that this will conjure up and that our beliefs have never changed in this country. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, brothers and sisters, be diligent while you out here. And I'm going to tell you, um, don't take no shit. And I'm not promoting violence. Don't sit around and wait for these people to body you. You know what I'm saying? Use your instincts and intuition. And if you sense that this shit is going to pop... You, you, you got to get proactive in protecting yourself and your family. Because if I'm out and some white drunk uh, start, uh, I'm going to give him one, one, one opportunity, my nigga. All right. Peace be upon you. And then <clears throat> I'm snatching your life because I can't sit around and hope that you don't snatch mine. You know, we, we are in those times now. But for black people, we've always been in those times. Let's be clear. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So uh, people think this trunk situation is bad. But if it's sharpening your intuitiveness and putting you back on point so that you can recognize who this open enemy is, yeah, I then thought, how can that not be beneficial to us? I thought that was the <clears throat> actual consensus when he got elected. I thought, all right, this is going to wake people up to know it's not sweet. Because when Trump, when, when Obama got elected... We sleep at the wheel. It but, is. But what it did was, it was symbolic of where you could go in this country. Remember, this is a symbol lyric country... And you also have to be symbol literate to understand a lot of it doesn't trickle down to your physical life, but to watch a black man and black woman ascend to that to the top is you know the, the top is to the top <laughs> office footages footages you know as <laughs> Cardi B said I got the footages you could just release the footages and then we looked that shit up and it was a real word it's real real bizarre shit so symbolically right. Mm-hmm. That's something that is supposed to empower you, but don't sit around and go, well, well, Obama's Obama, nigga. No, you got to then activate yeah. your ass and do something so that that becomes something that sparked you. It's like the Million Man March. I was there, the original Million Man March, and it did inspire and spark communities and brothers, and, you know, to go out and, you know what I mean? So the same thing with Trump. Right. Trump is sparking a different kind of 
Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. For the white boys to come on out and get bold and shit. But, you know, so we, we have a, a weird dynamic going on in this country. So while I was inspired by Obama, I told you a, a tear came oh, down oh, my yeah. eyes. I, yeah, I, I seen it. I had a bottle of champagne. <laughs> I saw it. But I didn't sit around play, and go, What's the song you played? Uh, Long Gone? Uh, 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 no, uh, Al Green? Was it Al Green? No, no it was... Uh, Change Gonna Come. Change Gonna Come. Cool. Sam Cooke. Sam Cooke. Sam right? Cook. Yeah. So I was in my emotions. Yeah. I was in my feelings. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I was in my feelings. And he, qu- he quoted uh, Sam Cooke too in his Yeah, in, yeah. In his he, was, he was playing that, that, that the wordplay shit yeah. on us and shit. But at the end of the day, I woke up that shit like, all right, nigga, I still got to go to work. Yeah, yeah. I got to do shit and get kids right and shit, right? So now you're seeing this Trump shit, you know, inspire because he's their hero. The ones who have been silent. He's their hero. But for us, if it puts you on point, because now, even me, when I go out into these restaurants now, I'm a little bit more aware of my surroundings, uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and things of that nature. So, you know. Thank you, Unify or Die. Absolutely. Sam and Stevenson. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. So that's where we are with that. Should I hit this button? Because this could be you for 50 bucks on the Patreon. People have been inquiring about that as well. But they ain't putting no bread up. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, you know, I, I get it. You know, you're interested. Just, just, just send us the $50. Yeah. And we will turn you into a star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So... Uh, this is this week. A student in uh, a school in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Uh, was shot and killed at school after a fight. Like this is like during school hours. Okay. Yeah. So the cops said it was a result of bullying and it was a fight and things like that. What I found kind of bugged was that afterwards they resumed classes. So they just disregarded this. Had there been a white girl named Sally who had got shot. There wouldn't be school for a week, and then they would have to have trauma. Uh, mm-hmm. the, the psychiatrist come through and deal with us two niggas, and we just gonna move on and have That's the sad. football game and continue to do the shit we've been doing. Is that what we're saying? Here? Yeah, the principal. I think it was the principal said that the decision to resume classes was about safety. Like we wanted the kids in school. Wait a minute! Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Motherfucker gets shot in school. Killed. Yes. Killed. Yes. But we want to keep kids in school. Yeah. Where the motherfucker got killed so that they could be safe. You 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 gotta watch the first Is episode. Is that what we're saying? Yeah, the first episode of South Park this season, right, was how normal school shootings are. Like they were in class mm-hmm. and then it's school and like it's people shooting in the hallway and, and they, they continue they, to yeah, they're trying to talk over the shooting. <laughs> like Wow, wow. Yo, it's crazy. But again, here in America, yeah. this is some normalized shit. You know what Sick, I mean? Yeah. So she decided, or he decided, just to keep the kids safe where one kid got killed and keep them in the building. Okay. That sounds a little ass backwards to me. I yeah. would think I would get them out of the school. Maybe there's another shooter. Maybe we need to be identifying other. Yeah. Maybe we need to uh, look at the crime scene. Yeah. Maybe we need to investigate. Maybe these kids, maybe that was one of their best friends. Maybe they need to go home and cry, and grieve to their parents. Right? Okay. All right. Sick. Sick shit. Thank you.